Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to cover the top 10 Linux interview questions. These are the most common Linux system administration job interview questions that you'll find out in the wild. So these are what you'll get in your first phone screen generally. There'll obviously be maybe more specific interviews after this, and it also depends on the position you're actually interviewing for. Any given position might involve lots of other tech too. While this covers the majority of like the types of things that are asked during junior Linux sysadmin interviews, you may also want to know sort of the similar types of questions for databases, TCP IP and networking, programming or a specific programming language. There may also be infrastructure or architecture questions if you're doing a more mid-level or senior type position. Likewise, you may be asked about specific applications or services. You can get mad, you can get sad, you can have lots of opinions about this, whatever. This is just the reality for tech phone screens. Your interviewer only has a couple of minutes to figure out if you're worth more time investment. So really regardless of what kind of job interview you're preparing for, if it involves Linux in some capacity, you should be really comfortable with these basic things. If you haven't yet, make sure to check out my uh, basic Linux system administration playlist because it covers sort of a lot of the theory and a lot of how Linux works behind what we're gonna talk about. As a last piece of caution or word of advice, do not just memorize these things because even if you make it through the first phone screen, they're gonna be pretty pissed if it turns out that you actually don't understand what you're doing after you make it through by memorizing answers to these basic questions. Use these questions as a jumping off point for further exploration. Okay, so let's jump right in. The first question you should immediately know the answer to is how would you check the kernel version of the currently running system that you're on? The answer is uname. Uname prints out system information. Specifically the dash A, the A flag, uname dash A will give you everything it's got. So you've got your host name, OS, kernel, release, uh, kernel version, architecture, etc. There's a couple small uh, permutations of this that you can use. So kernel version and kernel release, if you're looking for just those specific chunks of information, but that's uname. So if someone asks you, how do you check the kernel version of a system or even what operating system is it running? This is a, a fairly quick way to find out. Another favorite question is, how would you go about checking what your current IP address is. And this may come in a couple permutations like, oh, what's the current address on, you know, the ETH0 device, or what's your current IPv6 address, or what have you. There's a couple ways to do this. I'll show you sort of the old and the new way. The old way is if config interface configuration. I've got a bunch of little devices here. Don't worry about that. This is the loopback device, and this is our Ethernet device. And you can see our IPv4 address is here along with broadcast and subnet mask. Our IPv6 address information can be found here. Now if someone asks you for a specific interface, in general you should be using the, the newer IP tools command. So IP adder, we want the address, show, that gives you everything, so all of your devices. Or you can give uh, another argument the device name. So IP adder show ETH0. As you can see, that gives you all the info for Ethernet 0, including IPv4, insider notation. How would you check for free disk space? Other versions of this question are, you know, how would you check uh, how much disk space is left or what percentage of disk space you're using? Don't get tripped up by different ways of uh, asking these. DF is your friend. DF all file systems, human readable formatting. So df space dash ah. This will give you a readout of all of your file systems, including virtual file systems. You can see our hard drive partitions are here and our root partition is mounted on SDA1 and you can see it's 5.8 gigs of capacity. We've used five gigs of that. So we've got about a half a gig left. We're using 91%. So DF, remember that, disk free. Managing services is a completely normal part of 
being a Linux sysadmin or working with Linux in general. So don't be surprised if someone asks you, how would you see if a service is running? Or how would you start or stop a, a service? Or how would you reload a service? On any newer system, uh, most major Linux distributions have switched to system D. However, on an older system, you would have said either service, uh, I'll use uh, udev just as the service name. This might be nginx or mysql or what have you. Service name goes here. Service udev status checks status of a service, uh, start, stop, etc. are also arguments you can put at the end. So service, service name, and then what you want to do to it. On a newer system D system, so something that is not running um, sys5 init or upstart or another init system, you would use system CTL. This is, so this is the new version, quote unquote, if that's all you remember. System CTL status service. Now, I'm on an old system. Uh, I'm not using system D, so this is a command not found. But the important thing is it's system CTL status service name. You'll notice that this is actually reversed the order of the service or unit name argument. System D calls this a unit instead of a service. But that's pretty much all you need to know. It takes the same start, stop, enable, disable, reload, etc. You can see I've got some, uh, some files and directories here. How would you check the total size of everything inside of a given directory? I'm going to say dush code. We'll check the code directory. Disk use, du. This is going to go and tally that up. So you can see I've got 80 megs worth of stuff in my code directory. Nice and easy. A little bit more networking focused. How would you check for open ports, let's say? This question can be asked in a couple different ways. Uh, check listening network sockets, open ports. Uh, you could say TC, uh, services that are listening on TCP or UDP ports or sockets. Um, so this question can come in a couple different versions. But if you hear you know, uh, network socket listening ports, TCP and UDP services, start thinking netstat, because netstat is what shows you that stuff. So by default, it gives you <laughs> basically a uselessly big uh, output. It's meant to be filtered down with, with other Linux and Unix tools. So you'll probably want to run something like netstat. I like uh, TU, so for TCP and UDP, uh, LPN, uh, listening, tulpin. Just remember that, and it's pretty good shorthand for like most times when you need this. Obviously, man netstat will get you the manual page for netstat. More on that in a second. So this shows you the address and port that different things are listening on. I'm actually going to run this command as root because we're going to, you'll see in a second, you can see on the right this uh, PID or program name uh, is actually blank for everything because we're not root. Only root can see that. So if we say sudo that, so execute it as root, you can see we now have all that extra information. Okay, so from left to right, what type of service is it? Well, it's TCP, IPv4, TCP, IPv6, UDP, UDP, IPv4. IPv6, excuse me, Whew, getting a little excited here. The local address that it's listening on. The 0000, 0, 0, 0 means all public addresses. Port 80, foreign addresses. Is it listening? And the process ID and name of the process, so it actually sort of looks up the process name from the PID that owns this socket. So you can see Nginx, our web server, is listening on port 80, and anyone on our local network uh, that can get to our machine can check out what we're hosting on our web server. 127.001 is our local machine here, so this is actually not accessible from outside of our machine. Again, for more on that, you just learn a little bit more about networking, but this netstat-tulpn uh, is extremely useful, and again, remember to run it as root if you can, because it just gives you that extra Okay, who is actually listening on that port is very interesting to know. How would you check CPU usage of a given process? You can run PS, AUX, and then grep for your process name. 
This is a pipe. If you're not familiar with pipes, I highly suggest that you watch some of my basic shell videos. It's like a building block of Linux, and you should not be a sysadmin if that doesn't make sense to you. So PS aux, pipe it into grep, and look for nginx. You can see these are all the processes right now in the process table that have nginx in the name, and you can get some process information this way. The user it's running as, you can see the master process is running as root, the worker process is running as www data, etc., etc. You kind of need to know how to parse this. Uh, read up on PS. Another way of doing this is top. You'll find top just about everywhere. So this is uh, updated by default, I think, every uh, second or two seconds. This gives you a lot more information, top. You can see, uh, by default, it's ordered uh, descending order by CPU time, uh, percentage of CPU that it's using. So this will be updated with your most CPU intensive processes, although you can change what it's sorted by. Likewise, it also gives you a bunch of other uh, stats about memory, swap and use, um, load averages, etc. A nice alternative to this, although you won't find it installed by default, is HTOP. If that's interesting to you, uh, I like this. You can search it easily with like the slash key, search for some process. Um, gives you a nice little graphical representation of the cores it sees, memory, swap, etc. Nice and intuitive. So that's how you sort of check what's going on with processes, what users own a process, what a process is running as, and things like CPU, memory usage, etc. How would you mount some kind of new volume? Let's say a new hard drive partition that you've just plugged in. Let's say a USB stick. How would you mount that in your system? Well, Linux will generally have a directory called mount on root, and that is sort of the, the canonical place to mount things. So to mount a new volume, you would say mount is the command, and then the absolute path to the volume. So if it's a device, like let's see, it's a hard drive partition, SDA2, it's the second partition on the SDA hard drive. You could say mount, address, and then the mount point. If I just wanted to mount it on mount, MNT, this would be the command. Likewise, checking for existing mounts is just the mount command without any arguments. So you can see here's what's mounted and the mount options it's got. And you also get a uh, file system type. So x4, got a butterfs here, on and on. Last little trick on mount just because it's fast. Um, if you automatically need to mount a volume at boot, what file would you look in? The answer is etc fs tab. If we take a quick look at that file, you can see this is our disk partitions that we want. So this is SDA1 and it's UUID, unique user ID, uh, unique uh, device ID, and our swap partition, SDA5 with its unique ID, so that we can find that at boot time. When I generally make changes to config files um, that are not part of a larger system, like just on my desktop, so not as part of a business configuration management setup, uh, I like to just leave my name in there just so I can quickly grep for files that have this string in them so that I can see everything that I've changed on a system um, you know, that isn't in some kind of configuration management or automatic provisioning script. Finally, the very, very most important thing, man pages. You will get asked how you look stuff up. How do you find answers to questions? Your first answer to this should be, if it's a command, I look at the man pages, the manual pages. So man command gets you there. So for example, man ps, you want to know all the options you could pass to ps. It's kind of a big command. Here are all the interesting things you can do with it. Generally, man pages have a sort of name of the command, a basic synopsis, the way you call it, sort of the syntax for calling it, a description of the command, uh, sort of a mini, mini, very dense tutorial usually. And some examples. BSDs are a lot better than most Linux distros for this, but you hope to find an examples section at the bottom. Uh, in this case, you've got an examples section here, although this is often missing depending on what the command is. And then a listing of all the options in detail.
you can see this is a, a very old and <laughs> well-documented command. Other than man, uh, Google server fault, stack overflow, these are good answers in an interview. You should know multiple ways of finding answers to questions. If you haven't read it yet, I will link it here, but the how to ask smart questions or how to ask questions the smart way uh, article is required reading for anybody in tech. So I hope that's been useful. If you want more of these, uh, either more for Linux, for higher level Linux questions, or for other sort of skill silos like databases, networking, programming, uh, infrastructure, cloud stuff, applications and services, I'd be happy to make more of these videos. So if they're helpful, leave a comment with uh, stuff you'd like to see covered. Subscribe for more. And if you haven't already, check out the uh, basic sysadmin skills playlist because there's just a whole lot of background stuff you need to know in there. So good luck on your job hunt and in your interviews. And uh, maybe we'll run across each other in real life sometime. Thanks for watching, guys.